Okay, thank you, Tor. You too. Any public comment? Hearing none, we'll move along. So next on the agenda is the error, errors and omissions listers yes. for discussion. Hello, good Hi. evening. So every year uh, about this time towards the end of the Clarissa, year. Clarissa, introduce yourself. Oh, who you are. Yes, okay, please. I'm Clarissa Thank Holmes, I'm the you, assessor, Clarissa. one of the assessors. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Um, at the end of the year, um, we the state requires that we present to the select board a list of errors that occurred in the grand list after the tax bills right. so that you can see what kind of impact it might or might not have mm -hmm. on the, uh, the budget. So um, this year, and I've got a sheet here that you uh, some copies. Well, that's the original. I don't know if everybody needs copies. Um, you, get them copy or no? you have to sign. It's for the select board to sign. Okay. Okay. It's a list of, I mean, you can pass it around that's if you want, um, of, of the changes we made after we did the tax bills. Excellent. The first one is a change that we found. Um, it was an error on our part. Uh, we put a water and sewer value on a on an extra lot somebody had, and it didn't have any water and sewer. And in the process of looking at the property for another reason, we found it. Understood. So it was only an adjustment of five thousand dollars assessment. Okay. The other six are personal property, and this happens every year. We send out personal property bills, and then we get calls from. The business is saying we don't have property. We took out our personal property. We don't have it anymore in Berlin. So um, those have to come off. Okay. Um, is that like if you have a, a storage jet? What is what? It's is a personal property. Is like a business. The, an office that has a bunch of uh, copy machines. Oh, okay. And, you know, it's, it's personal property. Okay. It's okay. equipment, trucks, and all that stuff. Um, so this year we had a particularly big one for the Bedini, uh, Benedini well, well sure. yeah, mm -hmm. because they, um, they were in the midst of changing accountants and, and the first filing they did was for 138,500. And we picked that up and put it in and lodged the grand list. And then after back and forth with, uh, the new accountant, um, we came up with it should have been only 16,000, which was more reasonable given last year's. So that was a big change. Normally we don't have that much. It's usually very small amounts. So uh, those are the, the uh, changes. And um, once the select board signs, then uh, Rachel will sign it and then file it with our grand list. Mm -hmm. And then the changes will go to the state next month for the final grand list. What's the net impact to the town? Uh, I actually figured it out. The total assess the assessment change was uh, a drop of two hundred seventy two thousand five hundred. That's assessment, and that translates to about six thousand four hundred and eighty dollars in tax dollars, um, based on the first. First fella has um, a homestead tax rate, and I applied that. And then the personal property has a non-residential rate, so I applied that higher rate to that. So it came out to around six thousand four eighty-one. Thank you. So that's the the actual tax dollars. Excellent. Okay. And thank you for presenting everything, and also for the details. Yeah. So um, the state puts out that form, and it's a good form that because it makes you write down exactly what happened. Absolutely. Absolutely. That wasn't the water in the junction. Sorry, what was that? That wasn't the water. Something. It sounds good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You may need to attend to that. Can I go? Yes, absolutely. 100%. Oh, I hope everyone. Good luck. Something in the water. It's like human. <laughs> Are we we now have a quorum. Tours here. Oh, oh, that's right. You're a select board member. I keep forgetting you're a select board member too. <laughs> I'm forgetful. 
Do we need a motion to? Uh, actually, you can put, if you want, this letter is a cover letter for it. That's I, wonderful. I wasn't sure about the weather on Monday and whether you'd have the meeting, so I wrote out the letter. Excellent. Um, so that can go with it, but it's just the form that has to go to uh, Rachel. It should be signed by a couple of select board members. Yeah, so if there is well, no questions, there wouldn't. So I'll move to it. approve the errors and omissions. That's what? excellent. Do I hear a second? second? I'll second. Thank you, Tour. And we've had an emergency in town, so Select Board Member Joe Staub has left the meeting at this time, and we still do have a quorum. So um, in terms of the motion on the floor, is there any discussion? Hearing none, um, all ayes. Aye. 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 Any nays? Motion carries. Thank you so okay. much, Clarissa. You're welcome. Thank you, and thank welcome. you for your help, really. Clarissa. We appreciate you. Hope you feel better, Tor. This yeah. needs signed by all the select board members. Uh, I don't know how many spaces there are. So, uh, there's, there's, I think there's only a couple spaces. It's the second page. Mm -hmm. Or how many? Maybe there's a whole. Usually, I, I, I think you have like two or three signatures. It doesn't have to be the whole select Thank you. board. Okay, well, Thank you for all of your thoroughness. Okay. You're have welcome. A wonderful evening and a merry you Christmas. Too. How do you have a great oh, holiday? Oh, here, holiday. though, I think. Well, okay. Just right. Right. I'll leave the top one open for Brad. Can't believe today is 1220 already. Mm. I can't either. I was just zooming. Uh, Okay, and while we're doing that, we'll move on for the Barrytown EMS update and contract opt option extension discussion. Any folks here to discuss that with us this evening? No? Or do you have anything? Dave and forth, uh, the interim director of Barrytown EMS was going to show up. Uh, I don't know if he might still be on the same thing that Joe just had to leave for or not. It's possible. We'll move past it now, and then we can circle back to it if he comes later. Okay. That's wonderful. So we also have at 630 the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department update and budget presentation, and I'm going to move over that as well for now due to the emergency. Um, all hands may not be on deck for that at this time. So the next on the agenda is the FY25 budget discussion. I'll open that up now for overview and discussion. Uh, didn't really get a chance to send that out. Um, still looking at a 3% uh, general pay raise for employee, non-union employees. Um, and I don't know if uh, Cal is able to get to some of the other numbers across the board or not. So don't really have much of an update for that yet tonight. Understood. Callie did send a notification to all board members. It was uh, toward the end of the day today. I did look at that. And so she's presented us with some more information to review. Okay. Thank you. So we'll move along from that as well for now. And then next on the agenda is the special taxing district impact fees discussion. Um, so in there, um, just kind of some thoughts I had, some, some of the authorities we can do as a town. Um, it's not to, just to put everything on the town-wide grand list. Uh, uh, we can put certain expenses under, you know, we can set up a special taxing district, you know, which would be a limited um, area of the town. Uh, then also we can look at uh, impact fees uh, for developers. One, one of the things that kind of brought this up to me was was the mall, and I was, I've been thinking about this for a long time, and Tom and I had a um, little discussion about it, is um, for my time in the DRB, and Carla, I'm sure you remember this as well, that you know, for each project that comes in, we look at that individual project's impact on traffic, for instance. But we don't do a higher level look at, well, if we do this project, this project, and this project, well, individually, they come in under our peak hour trips or whatever it's called. But, you know, the combination of all three of them could, could really create some traffic uh, issues, you know, in the future, like at, at, if they're all, all have the same rush hour or things like that. Um, so that's what some of the 
um, towns in the uh, in the state have. I know Burlington has a very um, expan uh, expansive uh, impact fee. Uh, you, you can figure it out. You, you can enter in square footage and, and the zoning right online, and it'll tell you how much would go to schools and to the fire department and to parks and and uh, everything like that. I'm not saying that we need to do anything quite as fancy, and I'm not even saying we need to do anything tonight. I just want to put it on your radar screens that these are some things we can do in the future, you know, as, as we start moving ahead. Uh, you know, just, I don't say thinking outside of the box. I don't like that term, but thinking beyond what we just normally think of uh, as far as, you know, how we can finance some of the town operations. Absolutely. Oh. Go ahead. Toward and to our Tom, is, is is it a fee for a specific, like is is it more than one or is there one impact fee that pays to different funds? How does how does it work? Impact fee is typically uh, universal for for projects, but there's I think there's also two topics here. There's the impact fee, and then there's this special taxing di district and. An example of where the select board may want to consider a special taxing district, th th there may be a, a neighborhood that the select board believes that there should be uh, sidewalks or, or or bike lanes on it. And so the, the, the select board could carve out those properties that uh, on, on, in that district that would then pay for those improvements to their to their to their neighborhood and um so so that that would be an example of a yeah of of a you know, uh what's it called here not an impact fee special but tax. a special tax. taxing tax. district mm -hmm. i guess i guess what i'm really asking is does the in the specifics of the impact fees is does it have to directly relate to an to an impact to the community like because tour just said to schools to or does it like is it if it's a if it's a building does it have to relate to you know if it's traffic we're concerned about does it have to be reused for roads I, I'm just wondering what the connection there is or if you know I think well, broader as much as as we wanted if, you know okay. uh, you know there's been a lot of talk about uh, parks uh, yeah coming up I mean you know we've been you know very limited financing parks in the past yeah thought it might be one area to start looking at. I know I know Burlington, um, you know, they, they put some to school, some to the fire department. I'm not saying we do want to do this. I'm not saying we don't want yeah, to no, do I, this. But we can, I, you know, there's options that are available to us. And, and I don't want I don't want to get into a habit where we're giving away our money to, to anybody else. But also don't want to be overburdening, you know, with these fees. Because each, you know, each, you know, we sit here and we think, well, you know, uh, uh, 2,500 square foot home. Well, we're going to get this much, you know, impact fee revenue. Well, that sounds great, you know, until all these projects start drying up. And, and right, you know, we we're trying to bring the projects into town, but at the same time, um, don't want to drive them away either. Right. Exactly. Yeah, it's a balancing act. <laughs> I can give you a, a, a example from my a personal past life. I was managing a facility in in uh, Williston. And we were needing to expand it, and um, this facility was com completely uh, complete impervious surface. I mean, there it was. It was an industrial area, uh, and they required that that you do landscaping on every project, as lots a lot of our regulations in Berlin. Uh, uh, but their their DRB saw that that this facility just did not make sense to have landscaping because trucks are running on, but they still charged us the impact fee for landscaping. They kept it in, in their bank for other landscaping projects in the town where it would be, would benefit the town. So, so uh, yeah. it, it, to me, I've, I've always been an advocate of that. Yeah, no, it, or, sounds, yeah. it sounds like something that we should definitely consider. I really appreciate you bringing that to our attention to our, and the explanation and also tone in the questions that you posed, Carla. Thank you. Any other discussion about this before we move along? Hearing none, we'll move on to the mailing of the WCUUSD school ballots. 
So I did send this out to folks. I expected Rachel to be here, but you know, we are ahead of our agenda. And so this is language that she wanted the select board to cons uh, uh, consider. That's the uh, suggested language from the school district. If there was no issues with that, uh, I believe she would be here asking the select board to, to agree to that language. Excellent. That along to you, Carla, if you feel comfortable making the motion. Sure, I'll move that we approve the language proposed by, by um, town, clerk. town clerk to um, mail ballots from the Unified School District. Do I hear a second? Not for me. Okay, I'll go ahead and second the motion. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. <laughs> Motion carries. Thank no, you. That's, that's no, that's a point of order. Uh, oh, so it doesn't actually. Yes. Passed. Yes. Yes. Very much so. We will postpone this for we when we. If Joe can come back or something. Exactly. Or... That's exactly what we need to do. I don't. Know, when, the... when was the due date for that time? Do you know? Um, it was on tonight's agenda, so I thought it was relatively soon. That's what she I may yet. Was. Yeah, she may yet show up tonight. Okay. Thank you. So now we'll move on to the CVRPC Transit Oriented Development MOU. So uh, I think I sent some of this in your packets as well. The 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 uh, I think it was last spring we were approached by uh, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. They have entered into a joint venture with the Chittenden County Solid Waste Management not solid waste management, the, the Regional Planning <laughs> Commission. Um, those two Regional Planning Commissions have been awarded a grant to, to um, uh, do a study of the rail corridors in, the, in those two uh, Regional Planning Commissions. And uh, have, they have reached out, and uh, the, uh, Central Vermont has reached out to Berlin because it, we have a pretty extensive uh, footprint of rail in our community. Uh, and they have uh, dollars to look at communities that may benefit from expanded rail or rail services or rail amenities. And um, I, the, as you likely know, uh, several years ago, the Planning Commission got approved Riverton for a, um, a, a designated village center. Uh, and so the proposal that uh, uh, Vince Conti put into uh, to the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission was that uh, Riverton, among other communities, but we specifically mentioned Riverton, uh, should be a focus of this this planning process. Um, there, there's likelihood of even dollars outside of traditional rail impacts for like um, uh, sidewalks. And in green space, um, so uh, uh, this memora memorandum of understanding is uh, outlines the town's obligations, and and we said what we were going to put staff time into it. There's no dollars from us ex outside of this, uh, staff time, um, and I know the, the planning commission looked at this recently, and um, uh, it would be. It would be um, my recommendation that the, the planning commission sign that letter of intent. I, Tor, I think you were um, you wanted to give make recommendation that I sign that on behalf of. Correct. Uh, so I I'll make the motion to approve it and authorize the zoning administrator to sign uh, the mm -hmm. documents on the on behalf of the town of Berlin. Thank you, Tor. And do I hear second? I'll second. And I'll open it up for discussion. I do have a question. So what I did read the responsibilities, but do you think it's considered? I mean, what's the time commitment? Because you don't have a lot of time. We, uh, <laughs> question. I, I, I'm trying to remember what we put in there. I, I think we put in there eight hours a month. Oh. And so it, it, it was when Vince and I discussed it, it, it seemed reasonable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just. And how much staff would you be requiring? Not me. just outside the time. It's me. So it would be you. It's my time. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. nope. mm -hmm. We're not adding staff. Okay. Tour, do you have any additional questions? 
Uh, no, I, I think this is a good idea and recommend its approval. Excellent. Very good. Okay. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate you, Tom. Waiting some more time. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a fun one. <laughs> yeah, you like that. As if you don't have enough to do. I know, right? that's what I was thinking, but. <laughs> it's amazing all that you accomplished. Yeah, and you for the town. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you. And now we'll move on to the town meeting warning, the article discussion, and the lack of appropriate USPS services in Berlin. Open that up for discussion now. Um. So if we want to do any charter changes, I think the date for the warning is December 29th. I'll, I'll have to double check that, uh, but I don't have anything ready quite tonight. Um, one thing to look at is moving from a town administrator to the town manager uh, form of government. Uh, we've got the local options tax uh, that, that you know we're moving ahead on. And then also, uh, I don't think it's be quite as needed, but the removing the requirement for a town vote for the for the town to sell property. Um, so I think we can. We might need to have a special meeting later on this week or early next week. I'm. What are your thoughts on Monday? Uh, and That's Christmas. Exactly <laughs> what I was going at. Maybe lack of attendance. Christmas. <laughs> uh, maybe, and maybe we can go from there on that. Maybe next Wednesday. Oh, yeah. that's my meeting. That's six o'clock. Yeah. I'm fairly free next week. Um, given that you indicated that the deadline for the charter changes would be 29th. December 29th, we probably should meet December 26th or 27th at the latest. Sooner oh. the better. And Maybe that's Tuesday or Wednesday. I know. Mm -hmm. Tuesday. Are you bowling next week, Flo, or do you have that off? Yes, I do have it off. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> can't get, can't interrupt that. No, definitely. That is off for next week. So sure. I'm very flexible. So whatever works for the majority. All right, great. Right. Do we want to have additional discussion tonight in terms of what tour is just described about moving from town administrator to town manager and the local option tax? And um, no, my recommendation uh, would be to you know to have it be effective July first, two thousand twenty-five. Um, there's a lot of moving pieces with this right now. Um, the first is that you know we're always at the um, mercy of the legislature i don't know if they could actually get to it you know this this time frame or not uh take some you know take some uh pressure off of them also uh you know it's been being on this leave of absence it's not really fair to him to say oh by the way we did your way with your job while you were gone you, you know you can come back to your job but you don't you can't so you know give him a time to, to get everything in place i i do have start working on some uh, position descriptions and stuff, you know, we can, we can send out. Um, I, I think, you know, that'd be important to be able to sell to the voters, um, you know, when we take it to them. Also, I think I did include a little mailing on the difference between a town administrator yep. and, uh, you know, as far as cost changes, I don't really anticipate too much. Um, you know, we are, one of the few remaining town administrator towns in the state. Um, and our town administrator salary is at the higher end of those towns. Um, and you know, at the, at the current rate, you know, it'd be me on the low side of median for a town manager. So I, I don't anticipate that being a huge budget impact that that goes through. And that's a good point. I'm glad that you made that um, tour in terms of explaining yeah. that to everyone as well. And I was going to be a little jovial and say, if we went this route, maybe that would incentivize and we could have Vince come back sooner. 
But I, I think, you know, just like you said, there's many towns that are already town managers and we are one of very few that are still town administrator run. Yeah, well. We are moving very fast in Berlin and forward, et cetera. And, um, you know, we could really use the additional expertise as well. So I like the description that you gave and thank you. Madam Chair, I would just, a, a word of caution is that as with town administrators, there, there are various levels of town managers. Correct. Um, it's, uh, Berlin has a lot of amenities that <clears throat> maybe some towns don't have this, the, the, the police force we have with water and sewer. Uh, the, I, I would not get fixated as, as a, a component of this uh, on salary. Uh, to, to, in my mind's eye, the right person will, will bring many, many times the grand list value to this community than what their, what their salary. Uh, and I would just point to the, the um, St. Albans, what they have done in the last 10 years, and, uh, and now that individual is working for Waterbury. I, I would encourage the select board to go you know, talk to these su successful town managers and get a sense on what the expectations should be. Um, that they have really borne fruit for their communities. That's a good point. That's excellent. Very good point. And I concur with that process. I think that would be wise. Tor, you mentioned a, a date of 7125. That was just for the town manager piece. The other, the 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 local options tax and selling properties, that that wasn't effective for those ones, correct? That's correct. But okay. you know, the, the problem is that you know, the village would probably say, well, we got to 25 to do this one. We'll just do them all at the same time. That's, that's, uh, um, I don't know what I'm trying to think that, uh, you know, a, um, a problem, uh, that may come up, but, um, I don't know. I'm just throwing out, I'm not saying, I'm not making a recommendation on this. I'm just throwing that out. Excellent. And also as part of this that we're discussing right now, there also was on the agenda, the lack of appropriate USPS services in Berlin. Did you want to touch on that tour? So, yeah. Um, I, Berlin's really getting shafted. And I think I can say this uh, since it's being recorded um, by the Montpelier post office and the, and the issues they've had. Um, you know, government agencies are supposed to have continuity of operations and continuity of government um, plans in place and clear that failed both on uh, part of the USPS and the General Services Administration, GSA, which is the actual landlord of that building. Um, so, you know, you know, I, I know there's been a longstanding committee to, uh, dealing with the lack of a post office here in Berlin. And, um, you know, change in our legislators uh, with Senator um, Welch and uh, Congressman Ballant. Um, so really wanted to get on their uh, radar screen that not only are the existing problems through there, they're much worse now that, you know, that we have to go all the way to Barry and hope that there's somebody there from my pillar at that time and not wasting trips and gas and and emissions if that person decides to leave early, but the Barry people are still there, but the Barry people can't touch the Montpelier people's mail and things like that. So, oh, really? I didn't know that. I, I have reached out to um, our delegation and uh, was hoping to maybe get a meeting with them set up, but at a minimum would like to have language. On, it'll, be, it'll be a floor meeting uh, vote um, something to the fact that you know we're we're getting uh, you know hosed by the post office and, and call upon uh, 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 you know the congressional delegation to do something about it. Thank you, Tour. I wasn't knowledgeable about the extent of that, so I appreciate the yeah. overview. And I appreciate you reaching out to the delegation and what you can set up and what you can find out further. 
Sure. Any other discussion surrounding this? Hearing none, we'll move on. The next item on the agenda is the animal control ordinance update. We'll have to push that back for another meeting. Okay, we'll go ahead and do that. I don't know, I don't think Carla's even seen a draft of that yet, is that correct? I don't believe she has. I haven't. Okay. So we will push that back to another meeting. And then the next item on the agenda that we touched on a little bit will be the charter change discussion and local options tax, town manager and other provisions. So we've talked about some of that. Is there anything else anyone wants to discuss surrounding that at this time? I don't have anything. Nope. Just okay. that we need to get a meeting together. To so we'll get a meeting again. together to go over all of that due to the deadline uh, coming fast upon us. And now I'll move on to the FEMA buyouts, the execution of the MOU, the maintenance agreement, and the FEMA model statement of assurances for property acquisition projects. So uh, we have two projects, the MSRV and the fares on Junction Road, uh, been accepted by FEMA into the project. So it's just the next step of paperwork from FEMA and, and from emergency management uh, to consider. So I do recommend approval of these documents. It does not commit the town to any, any money uh, or anything like that. It's just that we're still going to proceed ahead with the projects. And I will make that, I'll make that motion. I'll second. So the motions on the table right now are to proceed ahead with the FEMA buyout and all of the documentation surrounding. Is there any discussion at this time? I, I just want to ask, I did look at that quickly, but so basically they pay, they buy out the property and then it's on, it, it's deeded to the town? That's correct. And then we're okay. very yeah. limited to what we can put on there, basically no buildings. Yeah. Okay. I think that's great. There should be more properties if that happens. So. Tor, does the town participates in that? Is it is there 25% participation? That is actually going to be either covered through the homeowner, existing homeowner or the state. Okay. Okay, good to know. Okay, if there's no other questions, we'll move on with a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And the next is the approval of the licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications in the payroll, payroll warrant. Oh, thank you. Do I read it? Please. <laughs> payable warrant. Do I move to approve that? Yes. Move yes. to approve payable warrant 224G14 with check number 23584 to 23622 in the amount of $85,725.77. And payroll warrant 24-14 for payroll from December 3rd, 20. December 3, 2023 to December 16, 2023, paid on December 2020, 2023, in the amount of $60,710.94, and check number 23583 to the town of Underhill for fittings. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And next on the agenda is the approval of the minutes for December 4th of this year. I don't think those are out yet. Okay. Okay. So we'll move over that because we do not have those to review. We have not reviewed them at this time. And um, unless anyone is on with us through the computer for the other two topics that we moved over, I suggest that we move them to the next regularly scheduled select board meeting. The, well, actually the Berrytown EMS, um, our contract with them expires in June. Uh, we have two years of extension options built into the contract. Um, so I, you know, I did invite their interim director to come in just to give us an update. I would like to, uh, ask him, you know, to come back and, and talk to us about it in the future. Um, but I think as far as the actual contract options themselves, I think we are, uh, we can go ahead and, and vote on those and I make the motion to do that. Excellent. Thank you, Tour. So we have Tour's motion on the floor to um, go forward with the contract option extension. 
And do I hear a second? I'll second. I, I do have a question. Now we'll open it up for discussion. I saw two different dates for when the extension, the option had to be um, executed. One said 12, 23, 2023, and one said 12, 20, I mean, 12, 31, 2023, 12, 31, 2024. Is it the 20? Is it this year or next year that the option has to be um, But it, it is this year for the 2024 extension, June, you know, the July 1st. We may have to go back and redo this in December of 24 again. Okay. I was just, because I did see, it was two different dates and I wasn't sure when it had to be done, but it doesn't matter, I guess. Okay. So the, the motion is for a one-year extension, not two-year extension? Uh, sure, we'll go with that. One year? Okay. Yeah. All those in favor of the one-year extension? Aye. Aye. I am just questioning whether, is that possible? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Motion carries. All in favor. Okay. Um, now we'll move on to the board roundtable. Do you have anything, Carla, for this evening? Nope. <laughs> And I don't have anything either. Tour? Um, I don't think I do either. Okay. Thank you very much. And now we're going to discuss the meeting schedule during the holidays. I know we don't have all board members with us. Do we want to postpone this till we have an opportunity to reach out to others? Or shall we so discuss I, it in terms of availability? I, I think... Um, you know, so it's discuss the special meeting next week, and then our next regular scheduled meeting is on January 1st, uh, which is also a holiday. Uh, so probably look at moving that meeting to that Tuesday or Wednesday as well. That would makes be sense. fine with me. That's it. That makes sense. And then we can ask the others and then plan accordingly. Sounds wonderful. Are we planning for an executive session this evening? Uh, I think we should. Okay. For the uh, real estate, real estate is that a two? Yes. Um, yes. I don't know yes. Right. yes. It is a two. Yes. Uh, so I do move an urgent executive session regarding real estate, one BSA three one three a two, and invite I'll the second. zoning administrator to join us. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries, and we're entering into an executive session. Slightly wasteful, um, dollar wise, because not everybody will end yeah. up voting. I couldn't um, find it when I went to vote, so I had to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It does. I mean, to me, it seems like a big portion of our taxes is education. Um, and for people who may not realize it's time to vote for that to show up in their mailbox is pretty convenient. Um, yeah. We have in the past, um, while the school would mail ballots and the town doesn't, we've sent out notifications to voters so they can at least understand um, why they're getting one and not the rest and know that the others exist. Yeah. Um, so hopefully that would eliminate any confusion mm -hmm. for voters. Does And do they want to do it because they do see more results? or I think they just want to get it out to as many people as possible. Um, if we chose not to mail it, um, we might get 300, 400 voters on a good town meeting, which is a small percentage yeah. of the taxpayers. Yeah. So sure. I think their hope is just to get out to as many people. Is your proposal that we do mail it? I'm in favor of letting the school go ahead and mail the school ballots, and we will handle mailing um, town ballots by request. Um, as you know, during town meeting, it's going to also be the presidential primary and voters have to specifically request which party they would like to vote for anyways. So, um, you know, we'll already have that mailing, but yeah, it would be nice to eliminate one other ballot that we have to worry about mailing. <laughs> so, so do we mail them or do they mail them? The school will do it automatically. Okay. Yeah. They do it right from the printer. They'll get a copy of our checklist and, and send them out. Yeah. And Tor, you voted in a negative on this earlier. Uh, I would say I'd get on my soapbox about this, but I don't think I can do that right now. 
but I, <laughs> I do have some security concerns uh, about this process. I, I don't know that any of them, you know, ever come out to fruition, but I think there are still some vulnerabilities there that exist in this process, and I'm not in favor of the wholesale mailing of ballots. I know people can be skeptical about how the whole voting process works. Um, while it may not be a perfect system, I do think with the electronic system we have through the state, it's it would be pretty, in my opinion, pretty hard. The, um, the problem, the, with the problem with these, especially the school ballots, uh, you don't get an electronic submission until after the poll is closed and the votes are commingled up at the at the union. Um, that's correct. Uh, yeah. Union uh, offices. My concern is that somebody gets a ballot mailed to them, um, and then they come in and vote, and they get their, you know, they get their town ballots, and they come in to cast their town ballots, um, and they say, "Well, I, you know, I couldn't find my school ballot." Okay, and that was okay. That was me last year until I actually did find it, but um, you know, just had to sign that little affidavit thing and you could be given a whole nother ballot that I could then vote on and both could be put together uh, into the box and there's you'd be no electronic check right there that you're issuing two ballots. Um, that's that's my concern with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so at the end of the voting process, every single ballot is associated with a voter. And so Except now that you've got 501 ballots for 500 votes cast, you don't know which ballot needs to be thrown out. So the joy is we have the checklist in front of us that is up to date as of the morning that we vote. And we would know if we got a ballot to give to the school before voting started. And if we didn't, you know, it, it could be they recycled it, they lost it, but we're only gonna give them one more to vote on, one more chance. They wouldn't have had that opportunity if we received a ballot returned in the mail from them, they would be marked in our system and on the checklist as already having voted. So they couldn't come in and say, I didn't vote, I didn't get that ballot because we already know no, they did. We have it. They're bringing in their ballots the day of the vote. The day of the vote. Or before. Or before. Because they do have the option to mail in to us ahead of time. My scenario, um, and I am an evil genius, so don't, um, <laughs> don't uh, bust my bubble here, um, is that, yeah, they bring in their pre-filled out town ballots and have the school ballot in with their packet so that you can't see it but claim that they have not, you know, like they, they couldn't find it and need another one. Now the scale, you know, I mean, we're talking about ones or twosies here, you know, the overall scheme of things, um, you know, but my mom always told me to, to watch your pennies, the dollars to take care of myself. So bless your mom. <laughs> so is there a check for that, Rachel? There, I mean, I, if we get ballots ahead of time, we're going to know if you're returning a town ballot, you're returning your school ballot, you're returning. Yeah, yeah, no scenario. As of that morning, yes, we will know. We will know everything that comes no, in. No, no, but if I come if in the here, morning I of, leave my ballot on, on voter day, and then I go, is there an after check? There, if you come in and the morning of, and you bring your... Sealed envelopes. Sealed envelopes. You, no, we're gonna I check. want an education. Right, uh, but we're going to check what's in your envelope oh, you so are know what you've returned. Oh, you are going to look inside the envelope. Right. We well, have, with, with we me, have with to. With me there? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, so Tor, does that, or, does that? That does not leave me my concern. <laughs> I know for some people, the whole process is just very scary. Um, I would There's just a lot of checks and balances to make it harder. And I, I can't speak for, you know, the country as a whole or whatnot, but right. I do know for, for, your, for our town, for our state, how the process works. I would be more concerned make, with somebody taking a ballot that was mailed to them that wasn't theirs and them sending Right, it. right. And that's, I would think that's more likely because you wouldn't know. How would I know? You don't know. I'm sure that's across the thing is, you know. Right. 
So right. that's Mark. Could be your son. Who does it agree? Yeah, everybody's putting their head on the sand on that one. But. <laughs> we appreciate you coming in to be able to Absolutely. explain it further. I think yeah. the difficult part for us is we did discuss it to an extent, <laughs> but the fact that they need a decision by tomorrow. So Joe was here mm -hmm. with us, but he had to leave due to an emergency here in town. And so that doesn't leave enough select board members right. to make a decision. Right. That's not absolute, that is, is that, the that is what it is. I mean, that was their hope. But if you haven't come to a decision or you guys want more time to mull it over. I mean, we'll, we're going to be meeting next week at that house. OK. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, if Joe or Brad were here for that meeting, you know, that would get us over that quorum number. Right. I, yeah, I the quorum number was the issue. I, I, I would I would try to have you throw your mercy on the court here floor and, <laughs> and, and just remind you that the town of Berlin uh, received a very generous gift from, from that school board <laughs> of 3.8 acres, which is valued of potentially millions of dollars and lots of revenue for the town. And uh, I, I would encourage you to think about that relationship we have um, and I understand your principles here, uh, but this is a this is you can maybe have this vote next year. Uh, but I would encourage you to to vote in the affirmative on this one. Not die on that sword. <laughs> For your consideration. <laughs> As a point of order, I'll open it back up for a vote. Um, in terms of how many are in favor of moving forward and any opposed. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay. Okay, so based on that, we cannot make a decision this evening. Okay. And the best that we could do is have it come forward and just have a later um, notification Perfect. as to whether it will be yes or no. That sounds board. great. And would it be helpful if somebody from the school board was also present for questions? No. No, I, I think I you okay. explained it really well. I, I, you did. You yeah. explained it very, very well. And I see tours concerns and yeah. you know everyone's yeah. and and we really appreciate it. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate so it. Much. Take Take care. Care. Is there is there a drop drop dead date? Um, all I heard of was tomorrow, but um, I'll have to reach out in the morning and just see how lenient mm -hmm. yeah. they are with that date. Mm -hmm. um, because if it is tomorrow, then the answer would just be do, no. do all the have all the do you know what all the other towns have done? No, I don't know what they've come to decisions for. Mm -hmm. um, Historic, so I mean, obviously, historically, they have. yeah, historically, it, right, exactly, yeah. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Oh, I didn't realize the little gift bag was for the mother. I thought it was for the dog. I thought there was dog treats at that daycare. Was it not? It was dog treats. I'm oh, like, so it's a t-shirt and cookies. And <laughs> I didn't get to clean it though. <laughs> <laughs> Have a cool. Good night. Thank you, Rachel. Okay. I entertain a motion to adjourn unless there's any other topics that are needing to be addressed. I'll move oh, good. to adjourn. So I'll we start. have a motion on the floor and a second from Tor Nelson. And so we will move to adjourn tonight's meeting. Thank you all. Thank Hope you. Hope you get out Thank of there you. soon, Tor. Yeah, Tor. Get, get back to work. I'm talking about going to meet today, but that fell through. So who knows? Oh, well, we look forward to seeing you in person. Absolutely. And we're thinking of you. And I'm glad you were here tonight, Tor. All right. Thanks.